Hey there, folks, and welcome to another update on the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Wednesday, January 15th. It is about 2.30 p.m. here Mountain Time, about 11.30 a.m. over in Hawaii. And we have the fourth phase of this current eruptive period going on at the summit of Kilauea that had just begun this morning in Hawaii. So I want to show you exactly what's going on here. We have um, the lava coming out of that same vent on the southwest side of the crater floor. Uh, we have fountaining that's going up to about 200 feet, about 60 meters or so with the, at its highest. Um, so a lot of gas propelling this lava upwards. This could go up potentially as maybe more gas-rich magma is injected into the system. It could also go down as well. So we'll have to wait and see a little bit. That fountaining lava is feeding a large lava flow that's slowly creeping back across the floor of the crater. And I think you'll see a little better view of that when I get to the thermal imagery so you can see how far that extends across the crater floor. Uh, this is all part of the eruptive period that began on December 23rd, just before Christmas. We had an eruption that lasted a day or so, a lull, another uh, day or so eruption, a lull. Then we had an eruption that went on for several days. Then it paused again. Um, and that was the intervening period leading up to this eruption today. But definitely with the lava fountaining and lava filling back in across the crater, this eruption is more or less in, in full force here. Over the last few days, the vent, only you can really see the vent's been open uh, and some incandescent glows, you've been able to see that at night. Uh, I'll probably show you that here in a second. Uh, but now with the lava coming out this morning, Hawaii local time, we have this fourth phase underway. In fact, let me just go ahead and show you that now. So here's the live shot of what's going on. But if we drag our little uh, time bar back a little bit, in fact, if we go back to, you know, 6.30 a.m. this, you know, uh, local time, you, know, you can see a, a little bit of lava coming out spattering, but it's not going anywhere. So it's it's a hard call. And this is kind of what it's been looking like for the last few days, uh, almost a week or so of a glow here, occasionally a little bit of spatter emerging, but really not going anywhere. Just that, that vent's been open and the incandescent glow from the, the magma beneath has been kind of coming out through that conduit. And so, you know, is that an eruption? Hard to say. The USGS has called it more or less a pause this last period uh, leading up to today where we have, uh, you know, substantially more lava coming out. So let me take you through uh, the timeline. So here we are at about 7 a.m. this morning, Hawaii time. So now the sun's up. You can see things a bit better. Uh, and again, I mean, yeah, that's probably an eruption by the strictest sense of the term, but uh, not like the episodes we've seen before. But you'll watch closely here and you'll see this thing really ramp up. In fact, I'm going to change the speed setting uh, up to two so we can watch this go a little bit closer. I'm going to drag you forward in time um, and get you a little closer to the eruption when it really got going here. So here we are at 745. Again, just minor spattering, but the lava is not leaving the vent area. It's pretty much falling back down into the vent or accumulating around the edge of that vent. Uh, here we are at about eight o'clock. And remember the, the whole thing kind of takes off at about 9.45. So I'm just slowly creeping you up a little bit closer to that uh, time interval. Here we are about 9.05, 9.15, 9, almost 9.30 here. Here we are about, yeah, 9.32. And you can see it's looked the same pretty much all day at this point. Um, but then if you watch closely here, things really do start ramping up. Um, so now we're at 944. Maybe we'll just let it play from here. But the fountaining and there's more lava coming out. The, the, the sporadic bursts of lava are increasing in frequency. The volume being emitted is increasing. And now we're actually seeing some of that lava actually spill out of the vent and back over the topography here. So now we get a little bit more volume of magma coming up through the conduit, feeding the vent, and that's spilling out as lava that starts um, inundating the, the crater floor here. So here we are at 9.45, just kind of moving forward. And you can see it now, it's really, now that the eruption has you know ramped up in intensity considerably. Again, this is two times speed, so this is a little faster than it was in real time, but you can see um, you know a healthier supply of lava that is being, that's feeding this eruption at this point. And then what we would see here in, in the next few minutes, of course, and this is leading up to 
exactly what's happening now is as more of the gas-rich magma makes its way to the surface, that gas propels the lava upwards into the air and that's where the fountaining really starts right now this is pretty gas poor there's a little bit of you know a, a little minor minor explosions of lava near the vent but they're probably not going much higher than you know a few meters or maybe tens of feet at the most but if we scoot this forward just a little bit i don't want to miss any of the good stuff here but um yeah now you can see it's a little bit more vigorous so now we're up to 952 and now things are really starting to to cruise here, 9.59. And it increased from that point on. I think um, it, it did start to die back down a little bit. So it's possibly reached its peak in this phase, but it's too early to say for sure. But you can see a lot of that lava, uh, some accumulating uh, up against the wall here, and then some of it starting to spill across the crater floor. And then somewhere in here is where they zoom out. The USGS re realizes that, well, we can't, we can't show show all the lava zoomed in this closely at that one little vent. And so they pull the camera back out. You can see the leading edge of the lava flow here. You can see hopefully a little textural and color difference between the fresh lava, which is a little bit more silvery in color, uh, pouring out over this slightly darker, more black uh, lava that's you know a few weeks old. So there's that lava just streaming across, a big fan, if you will, like a delta coming across the, the floor of the... The crater there so that's the uh, eruption so far so if you um, want to you can throw on the usgs uh, live webcam feed and um, put that up in your house and you know enjoy your meals or little ambiance while you're sitting there let's go ahead and look at the i want to show you the vent first just to kind of reorient people to where this is all occurring so this is a map of the kilauea uh, Caldera, um, the entrance to the parks over here. This is sort of the visitor center area. Um, USGS used to have a facility over here. But the eruptive vents, this is this, this down-dropped uh, crater within the greater caldera system. And over here at the southwest side, this is where those vents are occurring. So the vents are here, and that lava that's spilling out even as we speak is moving more or less to the east across the, the crater floor, filling it in. This map's from January 2nd, but the crater or the vent location is still the same. Let's switch over to the update from the USGS. So this just came out um, just a few minutes ago, oh, maybe 10, 20 minutes ago. Um, yeah, so uh, the eruption resumed. Um, let's see, I'm just kind of scrolling here. This marks the beginning of the fourth episode of the ongoing summit eruption. By 950, lava flow activity increased. Lava fountaining began around 955. At the time of writing, about 10% of the floor of the crater has been covered with new lava. Uh, and based on webcam imagery, the lava fountains appear to be about, and there's where that number I, I gave you, 60 meters to 200 feet high. Uh, the slowish, sluggish slow effusion rate at the start of the fourth eruptive episode was shorter than the sluggish start of the second and third episodes. Um, so it's just one vent, not a series of them. I know this map shows two vents. This is just the northern vent that's erupting right now, so not both of those are active at this time. Um, if fountaining continues, it's possible that the fountain heights will increase as more gas-rich lava erupts. It's not possible to estimate how high the fountains could get, but prior episodes have produced fountains over 200 feet or 70 meters that lasted up to 24 hours. Um, like I said, this is the fourth phase, and they're just continuing monitoring all the good things that our good friends in the USGS do. Here's the summit webcam, some other webcams. So these are just taking photos every, um, I think, maybe 10 minutes or so. So this maybe isn't the most recent one. We could try updating it. Yeah, so there's that lava fountaining. You know, it's not even quite... I think some of the older ones, it was up maybe half the height of the depth of the, the crater there. This one's a little bit lower, maybe a third of the height. But that gives you a little perspective there. Uh, and then that lava flow field coming out this way. Uh, similar view to what we saw on the live feed with the, the, the vents kind of like down here in the bottom right foreground. Make sure my head's not blocking anything. Uh, and then it's filling out this area here. So you can see that fresh lava flow. You can see the contact right along here with that fresh lava flow and the older flow. It'll be a nice visual tonight. So folks who are out in Hawaii um, heading up to the, the summit viewpoints and watching this thing as it gets darker would be really spectacular. Thermal imagery shows it really nicely as well. So this is the same view with the vent down here in the lower right and the new lava flow field 
just beyond it and so you can see the vent or what's just the edge of the vent here and then the extent of that lava flow field so a little better view of exactly how much of the the crater floor at this point uh, has been covered with lava obviously as the fountaining continues that's going to supply more lava and you know if this goes on for a day or so even probably less than that i would expect this lava flow field to extend you know, most of the way across the caldera crater floor, maybe half or so if it goes 24 hours, and then maybe even further if it sustains even further than that. Uh, and then again, there's that same view from uh, the the live feed webcam. So some summit webcam views. Uh, I thought this was kind of fun here. This kind of shows you the activity since it began. So what we have here is one of the tilt meters here. So this is tilt. So whenever you see the blue line go up, that's inflation. Uh, as it comes down, that's deflation. And so, and then what we have here in, in the in the pink bars are the three episodes that preceded this eruption. So we had the initial episode one phase of the eruption around December 23rd. Um, then it died down for a day or so, a little less actually. Then it picked back up on Christmas Eve, um, went through most of Christmas, and that was episode two. But you can see the deflation, you know, initial inflation, as the lava is erupting and then as more lava gets pushed out to the ground deflation in the system then recharging with inflation deflation again not as maybe not as pronounced here but a, a little bit more subtle inflation here which started it looks like on the 27th or 28th of december uh, and then episode three was a longer one it was kind of longer lived uh, it took a couple days for the inflation signal to reverse down back to a deflationary signal then we had this lull um, where just this vent was open like i showed you when i dragged the timer back to when it was dark and this is them you know again this was put together uh, on the 9th or so of January, so about a week ago. And they, if you read the caption here, they say, assuming the vent remains open, continue, um, assuming the event remains open and inflation rate remains constant, a new episode could potentially begin sometime between January 8th and 13th when the ground tilt is expected to reach about 12 microradians. So they missed it by two days. Um, they gave it a window and it was about two days later than that. But we do have this fourth episode that's begun here, which is pretty exciting. Um, monitoring data over this time period. Um, Earthquake-wise, not much going on over the past week. These conduits are established, so there's really no reason for there to be a high amount of earthquake activity now that the magma has a, a clear pathway to move to the surface. Um, different than when we were looking at this before Christmas when it had to establish that pathway and we were seeing a lot of earthquakes around the summit area of Kilauea. Um, so again, yeah, not much in the way of earthquakes in the area. Um, Although the earthquakes that they have had, you can see that during this lull, they've slowly more or less ramped up, leading to about January 13th or so, about two days ago. And then we've got the eruption beginning today on the 15th. So a little bit of an uptick in earthquake activity, um, but not a, a huge indicator. The inflation right now seems to be the better indicator for when these eruptive phases might take place. Uh, and this is just a plot of earthquakes per day and recognize that some of these earthquakes like these deeper ones are not directly associated with and so same, same thing with these south flank eruption or earthquakes here most of these are unrelated to exactly what's going on and what's feeding this eruption here up at Kilauea I mean it's all related to the hotspot fundamentally but um, not not so directly and then there's that tilt signal there so this is the uh, blue line here is the uh, tilt meter that's on the west rim of the caldera so you can see the inflation a little bit of a deflation but overall an inflationary trend um, over the past week while we were waiting for this fourth phase to get going a little bit of a lull but then it kicks back up and then this is actually where right about here's where this eruption begins so we did get to a more or less high point here with the tilt meter apparently that was the threshold that was needed to expel the this magma up to the surface so um, pretty fascinating stuff we'll see where this goes um, how long will this phase last will it just be another 24 hour or so phase will it last longer 
No one knows. Um, how many more phases is this eruptive sort of cycle going to have? Again, those are those are unknowns. Is it going to be four? Is it going to be 10? Is it going to be 40? Um, will inflation resume? Um, most likely, we're going to see in the next few days after this phase, some sort of deflationary signal. And so will inflation start to pick up? All of these, of course, are related to how much magma is in the subsurface, what it's doing, where it's moving, and sort of the timing of it all. And so I'm going to be here watching the data with you and learning along with you as best I can. Uh, that's what makes this fun is it's a bit, um, I wouldn't say unpredictable, but we don't know the, the fine details, but we can surely track some of the trends in the data and start to see when those eruption windows might occur. But that's it for today. Thanks again for your time and thanks again for your support of the channel. Uh, if you like what you see here, we appreciate your support. You can do that by going under the video description and there's some links there where you can donate. You can do that monthly. You can do a one-time donation if you want to, or you can click the three little dots at the bottom of your viewer and there's a thanks button there and that's another way you can donate as well or just enjoy it as you were either way and that's all for now so thanks for your time and we'll see you next time take care